Hi, I'm Darren Perry, Technical Support Manager for Suprema U.S. Wind design for low-slope roofing is a significant challenge facing designers and roofing industry professionals. Today we're going to review an example problem using ASCE 7 to determine wind design pressures for low-slope roofing. So here's our example problem. We have an airport terminal addition. It's risk category 3. Uh, it's surrounded by uniform open terrain, and since it's an airport, it's uh, considered exposure C. The building's going to be 100 foot by 100 foot uh, with a 30 foot high roof. It's a low slope roof, which is, uh, let's say, less than uh, 1 and 1 half uh, in 12 pitch. It's also located in Port St. Lucie, Florida, near the Florida uh, Atlantic coast. Okay, first, what is ASCE 7? ASCE 7 is American Society of Civil Engineers design document for calculating environmental loads on buildings and other structures. This includes uh, calculating low slope roofing wind design. ASCE 7 is required in the 2018 International Building Code and also the 2020 Florida Building Code. Okay, let's review ASCE 7 a bit uh, here, uh, some preliminary review. Uh, before we calculate the uh, low slope roofing design pressure. All right, low slope roofing design pressure is based uh, uh, on uh, two different components. Uh, you've got the velocity pressure from wind that simply blows across uh, the terrain, and uh, that wind uh, will strike the building. Uh, and so you have uh, two components there. One is the internal pressure component, uh, the component of the pressure that uh, enters the building enclosure through uh, cracks, crevices, and things like that, and uh, will pressurize the interior of the building. It'll put it under positive pressure. That's one component. The next component of pressure is the component of the velocity pressure that flows up and over the building roof. And uh, that's based on several variables uh, 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 regarding the uh, roof uh, geometry. Uh, or the presence of a parapet, the roof slope, uh, an overhang, things like that. Uh, so you've got the velocity pressure flowing around the surrounding terrain, then that uh, strikes the building. Um, one component, uh, internal pressure component, gets inside. The external goes up and over the roof. The combined effects are designed wind pressure that we're looking for. So in ASCE 716, there are two equations and seven variables used to uh, calculate the uh, design pressure for roofing. Uh, the first equation is for velocity pressure, the Q sub H, and the second equation is our design pressure equation, uh, our goal here, and that is to find the design pressure for the building roof. So uh, the velocity pressure we calculate uh, first, we have a, a, a constant, a 0 0.00256, an air constant, and that's based on the mass density of uh, the air blowing across the uh, uh, terrain. Uh, then we have a K sub Z. This is an exposure coefficient, uh, also referred to as a ground roughness coefficient, and that's pulled from tables in ASCE 7. Uh, and so our K sub Z uh, exposure coefficient for our building example here would be uh, a 30-foot high roof, uh, and it's surrounded by exposure C, open terrain, and the uh, K sub Z exposure coefficient uh, is 0.98 here for our example. Uh, the next uh, variable is K sub Z T, a topographic factor, and in our example, we're surrounded by uniform terrain, and since our building is not located on a hill or escarpment, uh, the K sub Z T is simply 1.0. Next variable is K sub D, a wind directionality factor, and uh, for roofs, uh, for components and cladding, uh, it's simple. It's pulled from the table, 26.6-1, and the uh, case of D is 0.85. Uh, a new variable to ASE 716 is case of Z. It's a ground elevation factor. It's based on the ground elevation above sea level. And what this uh, elevation factor does, it adjusts for the air density above sea level. So at sea level, it's simply 1.0. But the uh, higher your building is above sea level, uh, that, that uh, variable case of B is lower and will uh, affect the um, velocity pressure. The higher elevation, the lower the uh, velocity pressure. So in our example here, it's just 1.0 because we're in Florida, located near sea level. Our next variable is our basic wind speed, and we pull that from maps in ASCE 716. And for our example, we're considering this risk category 3, 
uh, the failure of uh, this building could result in substantial uh, uh, risk to human life. Uh, so we're going to um, uh, use our risk category map, uh, risk category three. And for Port St. Lucie, Florida, uh, the velocity would be 170 mile per hour. Uh, the Florida Building Code also requires uh, they, you follow their, their building code maps, which are coincidentally here are the same, and uh, the wind speed is 170 mile per hour. So now we have all the variables we need to calculate the velocity pressure, the pressure induced by the wind before it hits the building as it's blowing across the terrain at 30 foot high, uh, for our example here, before it hits the roof. Uh, so we plug all our variables in and we come up with a velocity pressure of 61.6 PSF. Now we can plug in this velocity pressure, this Q sub H in our equation, to solve for the design wind and uplift pressure. Okay, our next uh, variable in the uh, design uh, wind uplift pressure equation is GC sub P. This is our external pressure coefficient. And uh, for our example, we had 100 foot by 100 foot, 30 foot high, low slope roof. So we uh, refer to figure 30.3-2A for components and cladding, since the roofing is components and cladding. And this figure is for roofs, low slope roofs, less than 60 foot high. Let's take a little closer look at this figure. Uh, there's a roof map here that shows the, the four zones on our roof, the zone 1, prime, 1, 2, and 3. And there's a graph here that uh, we use to determine the external pressure coefficients for each of the four roof zones. So we use this to find first the uh, zone 1 prime. And uh, for roofing here, our zone 1 prime is negative uh, 0.9 towards the field of the roof, the internal center of the roof. Uh, zone 1 is negative uh, 1.7, a little higher as we get near the uh, perimeter. And the size of this zone is 0.6 times the roof height. In our case, we have a 30-foot high building. 0 0.6 times 30 equals 18 foot. So our width here is 18 foot. Okay, our next zone, zone 2, the outer perimeter of the roof, uh, the coefficient is negative uh, 2.3 for zone 2, and the size of that zone is also 0. 0.6 times the roof height, so another 18-foot uh, along the edge of this uh, roof. Uh, now, finally, our zone 3, our corner zone, uh, the external pressure coefficient is negative 3.2, and the uh, dimensions of that uh, zone are 0. 0.6 times the height times 0. 0.2 times the height, an L-shaped uh, area. Okay, now we have all four external pressure coefficients for our uh, roof zones, uh, for zone one prime, one, two, and three. So the last variable we are looking for here in our uh, design pressure equation is the internal pressure coefficient, the GC sub PI. And for our example, we're gonna assume we have an enclosed building and meets the definitions in ASC 716 for an enclosed building. We can choose a uh, positive 0.18 uh, for our GC sub PI. Now we have all the variables we need for the design pressure for all roof zones and we can plug those values in to our, uh, to our equations and we can solve for the ultimate design pressures. And the ultimate design pressures here are because we use ultimate design wind speeds from our uh, risk category maps but we want the allowable uh, stress design uh, pressures uh, in order to select our low slope roofing. So we can multiply the ultimate design pressures by a load reduction factor of 0.6. So we multiply each roof zone design pressure by 0.6 and now we can determine the allowable stress design pressure, the PASD, for each roof zone. We use the uh, allowable stress design pressure to find low slope roofing that's been tested in a third party lab or, or approved by uh, a jurisdictional agency uh, that will meet, that will withstand these pressures. So let's break it down a little further. Let's look at the uh, figure for our example here, a 100 foot by 100 foot roof. And you can see we have the, uh, each pressure for each roof zone. And um, we have a table here that shows the pressures for zones one, prime, one, two, and three. So for roof zone one prime, 
Uh, it's uh, the, the size of this area is relatively small. Uh, it only represents about 8% of our in to total roof area, and the design pressure would be 39.9 PSF. So we would, uh, we would have to search for a roof that would uh, withstand uh, 39.9 PSF, the maximum design pressure, that, would with, uh, that could withstand that pressure, or an FM uh, rating of uh, FM 1-90. For zone 1, uh, the area that represents about one-third of the roof area, uh, and the design pressure would be 69.5 PSF, requiring FM 1-150. For zone 2, the outer perimeter of the roof uh, it represents uh, a little over 50%, 52% of our uh, example problem here, uh, requiring a design pressure of 91.7 PSF or an FM rating of 1-195, so rather high pressure there. Uh, in Zone 3, the corners, a uh, small area, 7% of our, our example here, uh, requiring an FM 1-255 rating. So now that we uh, have all our uh, design pressures, we can go to FM Roof Nav. We can find an FM uh, approval. We can go uh, search for a Miami date in OA, uh, meeting the maximum design pressure requirements, or say a Florida evaluation report that would also uh, uh, have uh, maximum design pressures that would uh, meet or exceed uh, our design pressures we've calculated. Uh, Suprema has some uh, excellent customizable fasting pattern drawings that can be used. They can be used to uh, demonstrate to uh, roofing professionals the uh, fasting patterns and fasting type for the different roof zones. So uh, they can be customized to show the number of fasters per board or the number of fasters required in uh, mechanically fastened single plies or multiply systems for each roof zone and uh, the number of fasteners. Uh, are clearly shown here in the area as well on the uh, on the uh, graphic. So for more information related to this topic, please refer to the video description below.